Law 45, preach the need for change, but never reform too much at once. Everyone understands the need for change in the abstract, but on the day-to-day -day level, people are creatures of habit. Too much innovation is traumatic and will lead to revolt. If you are new to a position of power or an outsider trying to build a power base, make a show of respecting the old way of doing things. If change is necessary, make it feel like a gentle improvement on the past. This is Ron. It is Tuesday, September the 5th. Welcome to Storytime. And I uh, continue with the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, and today, Law 45. Human psychology contains many dualities, one of them being that even while people understand the need for change, knowing how important it is for institutions and individuals to be occasionally renewed, they are also irritated and upset by changes that affect them personally. They know that change is necessary and that novelty provides relief from boredom, but deep inside they cling to the past. Change in the abstract or superficial change they desire, but a change that upsets core habits and routines is deeply disturbing to them. No revolution has gone without a powerful later reaction against it, for in the long run the void it creates proves too unsettling to the human animal, who unconsciously associates such voids with death and chaos. The opportunity for change and renewal seduces people to the side of the revolution, but once their enthusiasm fades, which it will, they are left with a certain emptiness. Yearning for the past, they create an opening for it to creep back in. For Machiavelli, the prophet who preaches and brings change can only survive by taking up arms. When the masses inevitably yearn for the past, he must be ready to use force. But the armed prophet cannot last long unless he quickly creates a new set of values and rituals to replace the old ones and to soothe the anxieties of those who dread change. It is far easier and less bloody to play a kind of con game. Preach change as much as you like and even enact your reforms, but give them the comforting appearance of older events and traditions. Reigning from AD 8 to AD 23, the Chinese Emperor Wang Mang emerged from a period of great historical turbulence in which the people yearned for order, an order represented for them by Confucius. Some 200 years earlier, however, Emperor Qin had ordered the writings of Confucius burned. A few years later, word had spread that certain texts had miraculously survived, hidden under the scholar's house. These texts may not have been genuine, but they gave Wang his opportunity. He first confiscated them, then had his scribes insert passages into them that seemed to support the changes he had been imposing on the country. When he released the texts, it seemed that Confucius sanctioned Wang's reforms, and the people felt comforted and accepted them more easily. Understand, the fact that the past is dead and buried gives you the freedom to reinterpret it. This, to support your cause, tinker with the facts. The past is a text in which you can safely insert your own lines. A simple gesture like using an old title or keeping the same number for a group will tie you to the past and support you with the authority of history. As Machiavelli himself observed, the Romans used this device when they transformed their monarchy into a republic. They may have installed two consuls in place of the king, but since the king had served, was served by 12 lictors, they retained the same number to serve under the consuls. The king had personally performed an annual sacrifice in a great spectacle that stirred the public. The republic retained this practice, only transferring it to a special chief of the ceremony, whom they called the king of the sacrifice. These and similar gestures satisfied the people and kept them from clamoring for the monarchy's return. Another strategy to disguise change is to make a loud and public display of support for the values of the past. Seem to be a zealot for tradition, and few will notice how unconventional you really are. Renaissance Florence had a centuries-old republic and was suspicious of anyone who flouted its traditions. Cosimo de' Medici made a show of enthusiastic support for the republic, while in reality he worked to bring the city under the control of his wealthy family. Informed, the Medicis retained the appearance of a republic. 
In substance, they rendered it powerless. They quietly enacted a radical change while appearing to safeguard tradition. Science claims a search for truth that would seem to protect it from conservatism and the irrationality of habit. It is a culture of innovation. Yet when Charles Darwin published his ideas of evolution, he faced fiercer opposition from his fellow scientists than from religious authorities. His theories challenged too many fixed ideas. Jonas Salk ran into the same wall with his radical innovations in immunology, as did Max Planck with his revolutionizing of physics. Planck later wrote of the scientific opposition he faced. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. The answer to this innate conservatism is to play the courtier's game. Galileo did this at the beginning of his scientific career. He later became more confrontational and paid for it. So pay lip service to tradition. Identify the elements in your revolution that can be made to seem to build on the past. Say the right things, make a show of conformity, and meanwhile, let your theories do their radical work. Play with appearances and respect past protocol. This is true in every arena, science being no exception. Finally, powerful people pay attention to the zeitgeist. If their reform is too far ahead of its time, few will understand it, and it will stir up anxiety and be hopelessly misinterpreted. The changes you make must seem less innovative than they are. England did eventually become a Protestant nation, as Cromwell wished, but it took over a century of gradual evolution. Watch the zeitgeist. If you work in a tumultuous time, there is power to be gained by preaching a return to the past, to comfort, tradition, and ritual. During a period of stagnation, on the other hand, play the card of reform and revolution, but beware of what you stir up. Those who finish a revolution are rarely those who start it. You will not succeed at this dangerous game unless you are willing to forestall the inevitable reaction against it by playing with appearances and building on the past. Reversal. The past is a corpse to be used as you see fit. If what happened in the recent past was painful and harsh, it is self-destructive to associate yourself with it. When Napoleon came to power, the French Revolution was fresh in everyone's minds. If the court that he established had borne any resemblance to the lavish court of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, his courtiers would have spent all their time worrying about their own necks. Instead, Napoleon established a court remarkable for its sobriety and lack of ostentation. It was the court of a man who valued work and military virtues. This new form seemed appropriate and reassuring. In other words, pay attention to the times, but understand, if you make a bold change from the past, you must avoid at all costs the appearance of a void or vacuum, or you will create terror. Even an ugly recent history will seem preferable to an empty space. Fill that space immediately with new rituals and forms. Soothing and growing familiar, these will secure your position among the masses. Finally, the arts, fashion, and technology would seem to be areas in which power would come from creating a radical rupture with the past and appearing cutting edge. Indeed, such a strategy can bring great power, but it has many dangers. It is inevitable that your innovations will be outdone by someone else. You have little control. Someone younger and fresher moves in a sudden new direction, making your bold innovation of yesterday seem tiresome and tame today. You are forever playing catch-up. Your power is tenuous and short-lived. You want a power built on something more solid. Using the past, tinkering with tradition, playing with convention to subvert it will give your creation something more than momentary appeal. Periods of dizzying change disguise the fact that a yearning for the past will inevitably creep back in. In the end, using the past for your own purposes will bring you more power than trying to cut it out completely. A futile and self-destructive behavior. And that was Law 45. Preach the need for change, but never reform too much at once. And it uh, kind of reminds me of some of the uh, uh, things that have been going on recently in the United States with uh, protests, and uh, particularly violent protests, and the uh, desire and want for change on the part of these violent protesters, and that their efforts are 
uh, if the, this law is to be uh, taken seriously, rather futile because they're basically in um, acting in uh, uh, acting contrarily to this particular law. They're uh, trying to force change down people's throats and uh, setting up again a vacuum uh, or the possibility of a, uh, a vacuum or a void. And uh, I believe that that uh, terrifies people and that they're, the, that they're going to be uh, resisted. The um, protesters, the violent protesters, are going to be resisted more vigorously because of it. And you see it happening. A lot of the people on the um, political left that are now denouncing some of the groups that are involved in and apparently responsible for uh, the violence in um, many of our cities. So, But uh, that was Law 45, and on uh, Thursday, the 7th, we will be at the next law, which is Law 46, Never Appear Too Perfect. Appearing better than others is always dangerous, but most dangerous of all is to appear to have no faults or weaknesses. Envy creates silent enemies. It is smart to occasionally display defects and admit to harmless vices in order to deflect envy and appear more human and approachable. Only gods and the dead can seem perfect with impunity. And that will be on Thursday, September the 7th. Until then, thank you for joining me and have a great day.